Tracing the genesis of beauty pageants vary. However, some use the biblical story of Esther as a reference point. This is when the then king of Persia, Ahasuerus, wanted a replacement of his wife for her rudeness. In Ghana, the first ever beauty pageant was linked with activities lined up for the attainment of independence. Records have it that on the evening of Friday, 4th March 1957, that is two days to Ghana's total liberation from British rule, the country was thrown into an atmosphere of total fiesta following the monumental crowning of Monica Amakwafia as the first Miss Ghana. Monica Amekwafia was crowned by the first president of the Republic of Ghana, Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, as an initiative to offer the independent Ghanaian woman a platform to positively impact society. The famous contestant number nine from the Transvolta Togoland, now Volta region, had broken all odds and made history. Over the years, pageants have evolved in ways that cut across all spheres right from educational institutions, tertiary, secondary, and even elite basic schools. Miss SHS Ghana to project specific, Miss Health Ghana to cultural base, Ghana's most beautiful, including body specifics like Miss SL Plus Ghana, not losing sight of the intercontinental and global pageants like Miss Africa and Miss Universe. Many young women enter beauty pageant competitions driven by dynamic purposes. For some, it is all about the ultimate prize. For others, it is about how they can be granted a platform that helps to champion their ideologies and shape their personalities. Others also envisage having the opportunity to impact the lives of people and positively contribute to Ghana's development. For many, they are driven by the number of positive pushes they receive prior to entering the pageant with their quest to bring pride to their families and shine the spotlight on their country. Growing up, you know, um, on television, we watch a lot of this, these women who, who represent themselves, who look very beautiful and glamorous, you know. When I was growing up, I thought of them as princesses. But when I understood what pageantry was about, I realized they were doing more than just being beautiful and smiling to the crowd. So I wanted to, first of all, gain confidence because um, I really wasn't the confident type in school because of the bullying and my, my size. So when I found out there was a pageant that was promoting uh, plus size women and encouraging them, I decided to join. I'd say that the youthful exuberance, I never really take that out because, you know, between the ages of 15, 16, 18, all through to 25, you like to try almost anything and everything. And at the time when I, I watched TV, it was one of the things that was on TV that caught my attention. It was beautiful to watch the pageantry, the outfits, the wave and everything. The core substance in this, I didn't know. It was just the whole euphoria and how beautiful it was. I thought, why not? I could be part of this. And I entered. It wasn't about beauty pageants. So it was about a car. There was a car, a prize car for the pageant. And I wanted a prize car. That's why I contested. I've always seen myself to be someone that can impact, can, that is impactful, that can be a change. But where we are from, to make a change, you need a platform. And I think pageantry gives you the opportunity to raise your voice, be a voice, make a change. One should really not underestimate what children really pick up and what they hear. Um, growing up, I had a few uncles who would come home and say, oh, this is our Miss Ghana, oh. I remember that there was, I, I, I cut a saw on my feet and then my older brother was like, oh, as for this one, you can't go to Miss Ghana again. No. So I kept hearing that, you know, title of pageantry, pageantry. And so it's something that registered in my memory. Okay. And so growing up when I saw, I could relate. 
Okay. So it was just that bit, what family said, what friends were saying about me and all of that. So I probably carried a little bit of it naturally with me. And so when I saw it, I said, why not? My family, especially my sisters and then my best friend, mm -hmm. they, they, they actually pushed me to, to, to get the form and put myself out there. The gentleman called Mr. Kutia, um, who was the marketing manager at the time for Pioneer Tobacco Company, he suggested that, oh, maybe you could enter the pageant. But also a friend, a mentor, who was Miss Ghana 1988, Jijo she advised that I contest the Miss Ghana uh, pageant in 1989. Um, she herself, being Miss Ghana, was at the time dating my brother. And she would come and visit uh, with her car that she won. And it's, I was really uh, enticed by that. I come from a, a quite conservative family. My parents are not big pageant fanatics, no, they are not. And I didn't quite know anyone in my family or friends or anyone that would say, oh, do go and do pageant. I think you'd be good at it. It was just me. I did Miss Girls Dorm, as funny as it sounds, in senior high school. And I came, I think, first one up. After then, <laughs> and I, I knew, oh, I love this, because I love doing it in, in high school. So I, I think I advised myself that I want to go into it. And I, I think somewhere along the line, I met people that kept saying, oh, you're so tall. Why are you not a model? Why are you not doing modeling? You should. So that's how come I, I encouraged myself and I went for it. The impact of the competition on the lives of many of these young ladies who compete is unbelievably enormous transformation and empowerment. Many of them have gone on to become national and global icons as well as beacon of hope. They have stood to fight for all that is beautiful, good and true. Before I was shy, people would say um, I wasn't assertive enough. Now, <laughs> now I know what I'm made of and I know who I am. I know what I want. So I go after it with every ounce in me. It has made me more confident in myself, in my goals and in everything that I believe in. Before the pageant. I was a tomboy. I wasn't the most glamorous person. I mean, I don't think I'm even, I still am glamorous now, but <laughs> um, I, I, I was, a, I'm a sportswoman. So the pageants probably brought out that little femininity in me. During the, the pageantry, okay. we went through various trainings, mm. you know, etiquette, um, we went through entrepreneurship, uh, we did martial arts, self-defense, other things. So with, with everything I gained there, I believe I've become a bit more outspoken, a bit more confident, a bit more wise. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I would say it has made me see life in a different way and think, think things through before I act. You really do not know what you can do until, you know, something, you know, pushes you to want to do something and you find out. I, in there, it's not recorded. It is a, it is a live show. 13 weeks where you're, it's, you can't even assume it is culture and tradition. So it has to be correct and accurate. Okay. So the process of having to write your own script and getting it edited and it's being slapped in your face. You didn't write some good English, it's not good and all of that. It was teary all right, but it really built me up. Mm -hmm. It really, really built me up. And I mean, standing on TV and you have three judges telling you that you're not good enough. That's what it means if you're being evicted or yeah. that's, that's what it means if you're being judged on a particular topic. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it didn't break me and uh, built my confidence. I mean, that was it for me. I just needed a little confidence to achieve everything that I wanted to do. For many across the country and around the world, it appears to be all about the beauty. But if we look beneath the surface, it is obvious that it is anything but pure representation of resilience, kindness, truth, hope, compassion and love.
This has now become the heart and soul of the competition, changing it from just being a beauty pageant to a force for good in global causes. Beauty queens, I would say, are simply are young ladies who have uh, been put together to compete for, uh, to display their beauty, and uh, at least definitely there will be a winner. And uh, in fact, they, they, they play, they have a, a high value or high stake on our culture. Its impact on Ghana's development, though mostly underrated, is one that can never be glossed over. Touching the lives of the thousands of people across the country with their passionately driven project, many have contributed in the fields of academia, health, finance, justice for the voiceless, education for the disadvantaged children, provision of social amenities, and promotion of tourism. In my time, there was nothing like developmental contributions. We didn't contest so that we help in the development. We, for me, uh, there were certain instances that we did um, fundraisers. So you as Miss Ghana or I as Miss Ghana would be taken to events where you help raise funds for the organization. So we, I did one for the Ghana Red Cross and I did one, I think, also for the Lebanese community. And then um, on Farmer's Day, I went and represented. Because of the sponsoring company, Pioneer Tobacco Company, and at the time, tobacco was big. We farmed tobacco in Ghana. Uh, so the Pioneer Tobacco Company took me as their Miss Ghana to uh, the Farmer's Day celebration in, in Winchi in the Brown Hafu region. What I did when I was appointed Miss Universe Ghana was to embark of, on sorry, um, a project, a project that I've wanted to do for some time now. I love children. I, I would give anything to see a child smile. And I've always been a sucker for dance. I love dancing as well. Yeah. So Jamestown, we have children that love dancing, just like I do. Yeah. And the only way to keep them away from the streets is to engage them in dance. So I set up a project called the Dancing Kids Project. I went to Jamestown, I met them, I met their families. And it will surprise you, the only language we were speaking was dance, the children and I. So we just put on some music and started dancing. And the whole atmosphere was charged. After the dance, I sat them down to mentor them and talk to them about why it's important to go to school. They were more focused to listen to what I had to say after the dance than before the dance. The part of the Vorte region that I represented, though we have the history of the first uh, beauty queen coming from the Vorte region, mm. the part that I come from didn't have that history of young girls even getting encouraged to want to go there. Now, or to want to be part of beauty pageants. Mm -hmm. Even the young girls were not even going to school. I was still going to school and still pursuing things that I thought was fun. And so when I went, I heard stories of young people saying that, oh, we didn't know that we could do this. And then the Queen Mothers who were supporting me said that she did this because she was exposed and she was going to school. Okay. So you can go back to school. We had lots of young girls returning to school. And for me, that was the first landmark um, you know, achievement. But personally, at that time, the, uh, the Millennium Development Goal 5, which was maternal health okay. and reducing maternal mortality was, was the target. You have your own reason why you go into a pageant, but by the time you are done, you come back into the community and there are pressing issues. Before I went, I thought I could talk about education. I came by a strange illness called chlamydia and I didn't yeah. know what it was and so I was reading about it. But by the time I finished, yes, chlamydia was a problem, but at that time it wasn't a challenge. Mm. The challenge was to rescue women who were, you know, losing their lives at the time that they were giving life to another person. So quickly we registered a lot. We, we registered almost about 500 women at the NHIS for free at the time. We also found out that most of the young girls would go, would get pregnant and try to abort it, which actually contributed to a lot of maternal mortality in that 
rural community. So we thought we should empower them. We got most of them to Abbey Creation. I trained about 15 of them at Abbey Creation, fashion designers. Uh, some went into decor. Um, some also went into vocational. I, I, even now, as now, we still do that. But a few of them have N, at NVTI who are still training into fashion. And people who had to go to school and could not afford. I didn't wow. have much, but I mean, I, I was lucky my mother was paying my fees. So the little things that I did and I was able to raise some small money, I'll support people who had to go back to school. I didn't do any project related to, the, to, to Mix SL Plus, okay. but uh, because of the boost of confidence I had, I volunteered at Nkasa Obing Initiative. It's actually an NGO that um, takes care of immediate needs of the various of an, uh, orphanages. Okay. The competition usually begins with a long session of auditions aimed at selecting the best candidates for the competition. After the selection, the women are then housed and taken through long weeks of preparation, grooming, learning and preliminary competitions before the grand finale. They are put through competitions that challenge their endurance, strength, intellectual capacities, confidence and resilience. The activities are usually facilitated by sponsors who ensure the effective running of the show as well as local organizers and national directors who supervise and regulate the production. By virtue of the fact that I'm the head of public events and communications, I speak about it to the public. And in terms of the event itself, there are different phases and different ways by which different people contribute to the process. So Miss Malaka, for example, we have the communication skills session where I, I host it, or I usually take the, the ladies through. And then there's also components of um, the big pitch where they pitch their business ideas where I also sit in to listen to the ideas that are being shared to be able to evaluate their performance and use that as a basis you know, for it. And then I'm part of the technical team as well who are responsible for the finale. A national director, in simple terms, is one who heads or manages a national pageant, seeing to day-to-day -day management of the pageant, whether it's recruiting, service providers, judges, contestants, and managing the team who help bring the dream of the pageant into a reality hmm. and in our case it depends it, it could be of a national or local character or it could be one representing an international franchise i wear two hats okay um, one of national director of the Mescani Beauty pageant, okay. which is our national pride and heritage, what they call it, or I like to say it's our national uh, beauty pageant, mm -hmm. the one initiated by our first president or sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. It's my job to maintain its reputation as a credible showbiz that um, has a national character mm -hmm. and seeks to empower our young women. Mm -hmm. In addition, we are the custodians of Ghana's tourism, arts and culture, and it's our duty to keep the torch burning okay. and inject innovative ideas to keep up with the times. The second hat I wear is that of representing the Miss World franchise. Okay. And as National Director for Miss World Ghana franchise, my task is to ensure that the vision, mission of the Miss World beauty pageant is implemented. Mm. For instance, it's my job to ensure that we choose a worthy representative of Ghana at the Miss World pageant mm. who epitomizes what the Miss World, Miss Ghana symbolize, which is beauty with a purpose. It's our mandate to ensure that we are positively impacting lives and for us here, we execute that mandate through the Miss Ghana Foundation, okay. which executes all the social intervention projects of the Miss Ghana brand. Every organization has its own um, criteria in terms of what they are looking out for. But for Miss Malaika, we are looking for people with beauty inside out. And by virtue of um, denotation, I would say we are looking for eloquence, we are looking for people who are bold, we are looking for people who 
have the confidence and are able to, you know, project themselves in the way that befits a beauty queen. For Miss Ghana and Miss World, what we are looking for is someone who possesses the qualities of beauty with a purpose. We're looking for that young woman who is passionate about positively impacting lives, someone who has the spirit of volunteering, a true patriot, a patriotic citizen who is prepared to carry the flag of Ghana high, both here in Ghana and abroad and for the rest of their lives. It's a mixed bag. The guiding um, principle is beauty with a purpose, okay? But then how do we identify that? We do that through a variety of mini, you know, events or judging criteria. Mm. So there are several tasks that we give. And these, these tasks are given weekly. So we have the task for photo shoots, where at the end of the day, we work with experts to determine who, who got the best from that particular task. We have a cooking edition where we are looking for the people who give up the best in terms of what we are looking at for the cooking. We, are, we have the fierce factor, where people go out in terms of fitness. We want to see how you are able to project yourself you know, on, the, on the fitness platform. And obviously we also use that to evaluate, to determine who a Miss Malika Queen is, so to say. And each one of these, you have to be excelling. You have to be excelling. So all of them put together, so it's a cumulative thing. And then eventually, if you are able to make it to the top 10, you have to be able to um, have a researched area about a particular topic where you will come and do a presentation on stage. And we are looking at the content and we are looking at your delivery and your eloquence, how you are able to articulate your views on stage. So at the end of the day, it becomes very obvious that this person is the queen because you've, you know, um, in terms of cumulative assessment from day one, you've been able to pass all the tasks that will be given and then the finale is when you actually come to articulate your views on specific topic areas. And then, yeah, and then we use that as basis to, to determine who the winner is. Okay. Topmost on the list is the Beauty with a Purpose Challenge, as is held at Miss World, okay. where the contestants embark on charity projects and mm. they're judged based on the project. Mm. Um, we also judge talent. They have performable talents and there's a panel of judges that judges. We have a fashion show during which we, we judge how well you walk your okay. voice because we take you through all these grooming lessons. Mm -hmm. So by the end of it, you should be, you know, able to you should have mastered your art and be able to walk, you know, elegantly as a lady should. Not cat walking, we're okay. talking about walking elegantly. Of course, there's a judging criteria for the best top model as okay. in this world, but, you know, uh, 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 in addition, we, we look at. Um, how intelligent the person is through, we do actually carry out some tests, written exams. Wow. Yes. And um, we have introduced um, essay writing because you realize that when um, you're crowned Miss Ghana, when you're working with a team on charity projects, we take you through proposal writing so you can do presentations, what have you. And it's very important that at least you got the basics. franchise holders, it's our duty to, to strike the balance between pro-Westing uh, views or expectations of who a beauty queen is okay. and a Ghanaian or African beauty. So it's, it's, it's a balancing act which we believe we pride ourselves in doing so well. We are a lifestyle brand. We are very ingrained in the lifestyle and culture of people. Um, what we what we offer is clothing. It's important um, for everybody um, to be properly clothed. And ATL is a partner to Miss Ghana because Miss Ghana represents Ghanaian culture, represents Ghanaian heritage. And what better way to do that through what we wear? Well, we, we, we think it's good. Um, we are giving back to society. It's our responsibility let's call it corporate social responsibility, let's say we believe in the um, 
the event organizers' ideals, their principles, whatever that they come up with, we thought that it was good to go along with them. This year, and I have to refer to the Miss Ghana pageant as well, it's celebrating its 65th anniversary. So we, they've been running the pageant for 65 years. And it was so instructive for me because I was part of the launch of, of this year's pageant. And something very interesting happened. They did a documentary and they interviewed a lot of the past um, contestants and some of the past queens. And one of the very important things they said was the amount of exposure being in a pageant like that provides to them. And we need to recognize that education is not just schooling. Education also includes exposure. It, in, it includes your experiences. Creating the identity of the Ghanaian woman. Yeah. You understand? So you probably use the judges who are also very uh, resource persons. They are you know, very educated people yeah. in that sphere. Yeah. They always try to correct the ladies when they are wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the direction is to get people to learn okay. and learn what is Ghanaian mm -hmm. and what is traditional and what is cultural. And I think um, ultimately we, we, we develop our people. It's a bit of both. So the first and most important for us is how are we portraying Ghana to the rest of the world. If we say that we are um, a Ghanaian company, we need to be part of something that positively portrays our nation and our identity. So that for us is the key thing. And then the second thing is how are we contributing to the development of these young women who are part of these pageants. And so the interaction with them, the educational components that we have with them, all of that is part of it. But we are also a business, and we're, a business, we're in business to make money. Exactly. And our customers are key to our business. So there's definitely the marketing side of it where we use the pageant as an opportunity to showcase our products, to release new collections. If I'm sponsoring a, a pageant, um, the objectives may be more than one. The objective, first objective is to also give back to society. The main objective is that these event organizers come to us and say that, look, I have this and these are my plans, these are my objectives. And we look and we see the similarity. We, we, we think of sinking and okay. saying that, okay, we also think like that. Yeah. What can we give back? What can we also throw back to society? And we say, okay, let's go along with it. So ultimately, Yes, we will benefit a little. We will create visibility for the brand. The winner of the local pageant is eligible to participate on international platform. And for many of these young ladies who compete, it is also their dream to have the opportunity to represent Ghana on their international stage, bring pride and shine the light on their motherland. But it seems as though the strict conflict of cultures, the lack of support and stiff opposition have characterized their inability to capture the international crown. Martha Araba Vroom, Miss Ghana, 1966, placed 15th in the Miss World pageant. 33 years later, Ekuba Kujo secured a place among the top 10 at Miss Universe 1999. Among the top 16 at Miss Universe 2017 was Ruth Kwashi. The closest to the Miss World crown was when medical student Karanzana Okainle Shooter placed third at the Miss World 2013. It's anything we're not doing right or, or it's something we're doing wrong. Miss World or Miss Universe is very subjective. I mean, first of all, who, who created these uh, pageants? Until recently, we didn't even have a black Miss America. Uh, it's very dominated by Western uh, values and, and Western uh, definitions. So it's very... Um, 
subjective. But in saying so, I think that we must look at it. A few Ghanaians or a couple of Ghanaians have made it to top three or top five before. So there is something we have and maybe we should, we should look at what they did to get there. But at the end of the day, the pageant shouldn't only be about winning uh, or being, getting the ultimate. It must be in participating and giving the platform to display what Ghana also has to offer. And if the person representing us uh, displays it well enough, it's good enough. Um, we shouldn't expect that we will win uh, but we will take part and we will represent and we will portray what Ghana is and we, we should do it well, well enough. I would say pageantry is a lot more political than we know. And when it comes to pageants, it is just like any business. It is to make money. If I have a pageant right now, aside the fact that I'm doing it to, to create a change or to impact positively the lives of others, I am also doing it to make money. It's a business. And is Ghana generating money enough for these international pageants? No, because we are not really big on pageantry. Is Thailand generating enough money to Miss Universe? Yes. Is Philippines? Yes. Is Vietnam? Yes. Is South Africa? Yes. Most of these countries, they generate so much money that it, it, I wouldn't say it's an automatic for them to, to uh, yes. maybe to place or anything, mm -hmm. but because they are generating so much money, they, they have this, like, maybe this an upper hand mm -hmm. as compared to Ghana. Okay. And most of the times, so their candidates are, are they, I don't know, they are well trained. Some of them are trained since childhood. Some of them understand the pageant since God knows how long. And because we are not really big on pageantry, we don't have that over here. And then we don't have the support. If you would cast your mind back to 2011-2012, when my team and I took over the franchise of Miss Garden Pageant, um, we came close to clinching. Our mm -hmm. first product, you know, emerged third, um, thereby, you know, earning the title of Miss World Africa. So my team and I have demonstrated that even from the word get-go that we do understand what it takes to clinch the title. Okay. However, we can't do it alone. We've realized, you know, over time and from the onset that it's a team effort. If there are international standards that are used in evaluating who becomes a winner, it's best to nurture or use the same criteria or standards in evaluating the winners here. There is more we should be doing to sell this product. Also, uh, use the Philippines as an example. The Philippines see pageantry as a very huge entertainment. Even when they move out of their country, they find three or four people within the congregating in one country. They are able, among the four, there is a queen. What does a queen do? She becomes a leader. She inspires them. She, she, she brings to the fore what they can do to survive on the foreign land. Mm -hmm. And this permeates deep into their uh, communities. Mm -hmm. They have community queens. So it's something they've been doing for ages. And it's actually demonstrated in the uh, championships. I mean, let me use the word. Yes. Uh, they've received a lot of crowns. crowns yeah. That is putting them where they are in terms of uh, pageantry. So I think we need to do more. But the challenge we have here is, where do we draw the thin line between pageantry that is going globally and the African value systems? Mm. We were talking about how, how uh, these pageants display themselves in the public, which is an affront to our Culture. culture. You can go to the streets and also talk to a few people and pick their thoughts on that. There are people who will tell you it's a, it's a no, no, no. Based on, some will be based on religious grounds. Some might be having personal you know, decisions. 
Some too, because of the fun of it, they are for it. If that's what she's chosen to and uh, she could do better there, yes, I'll allow her. I wouldn't advise her to go into it because at the end of the day, to be my time, my money and my resources, that will go into it, so why not? No, I wouldn't like to venture into that. Yes, I would grant her the permission if she has the capabilities of becoming a beauty queen. It's something we have to really encourage because most of our daughters that are coming, that is, that is their God-given talent and we should really help them in doing that. It depends on the kind of pageant. Today we have different forms of pageants. We have the Ghana's Most Beautiful, that is quite traditional. For that one, maybe I may consider. But for the others, because of some limitations, I don't think I would agree to that. In Ghana, many believe that pageantry is disrespect to the true essence of being an African woman, and so it is not in line with our indigenous African traditions, accounting for low interest and limited support. But the bigger question still lingers, is pageantry indeed a disrespect to femininity? The moment something goes a little bit contrary to your culture, uh, Deep tradition and culture will say is disrespect, mm. but it's not your culture, so you can't even measure it there at all. Accept that it is an imported culture, and you can just work around it to fit. And it gets really tough, and it won't. It won't be today. The people who understand pageants and do it as it's supposed to be will be generations that will come way after us, way way after us. Mm, okay. Yes. So now, yes, we'll struggle a bit, but it will settle. What beauty pageant does is to empower women, and that's all about femininity. If it's about empowering women, how is that contrary to what we believe in, in, in our values and in our culture? If we are saying someone is confident in their body, so they, they are confident in that swimsuit they're wearing, do you know how many people feel bad about their body? For them to wear something a little bit revealing is an issue because they have low self-esteem. For you to have that um, positive energy about yourself to wear that bikini, do you know what it takes? So if we think this has to do with uh, violating our cultures and values, so then we wouldn't wear it. How do we perform on that stage? How do we empower someone that's a little bit thick to wear the bikini? How? It's not possible. Culture is, is what we do. It's, a, it's, 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 it's our way of life. It's a way of life that has been passed down from generation to generation. Okay? And some of these cultures that we've adopted, some of them are, I wouldn't say archaic, but you know, we, we tend to adopt, adopt outsiders' culture as well. Okay. So as we move or we evolve, some of the things we used to do in the past, we do not do anything. We do not do them anymore. anymore. So I do not believe pageantry is, is, um, is a, disrespect. It's a disrespect to femininity. Okay. I believe that it, either, it rather gives you the opportunity to come out and to show the world how confident you are and what, what, you, you, can what you can offer. Okay. I think what could be disrespectful about it would be when the organizers or the pageant puts uh, the, the, the participants in harm's way where they face harassment or where they face uh, um, they, are, they, are, they are forced to give favors, sexual favors because they need some sponsorship or they need money that must be looked at and addressed uh, in our time luckily I would speak for myself I didn't have to do anything like that and the, the, the this is what the pageant organizers must look at. But beyond that, what happens on stage and the show is entertainment and it's of a certain value. Um, and that should be, be promoted and protected. Pageants have been there long, long before these new ones. I mean, if, if you go back into our history, um, women um, have done things like this. Similar to what we call in Python. Mm. The Krobos have their own. Yes. Um, the Ashantis have their own. The Evers have their own. Where women dress culturally and display mm. 
it's a pageant of some sort. You understand? Yes. Um, so if you come to that point where you think you are the respecting woman, then it means probably that pageant is not doing something right. Mm. But if basically it is to let them voice out and say things, um, display talents and everything, talk about their group, mm. their ethnic grouping or tribes and everything, mm. what is respectful about that? There's nothing disrespectful about that. Mm. You know, um, there are people who are very finicky about pageants. Mm. They are not outmoded at all. Um, and generally, competitions are not outmoded. Mm. And the reason is that people have talents, they have abilities that need to be showcased. These are opportunities for them to do so. Okay. So beyond just pageants, there are musical competitions, talent competitions. They are important vehicles for young people to express who they are and create an opportunity for them to expose um, themselves to the rest of the world. So these are platforms for exposure that we need to just ensure that are being done in a way that empowers them okay. rather than creates any challenges for them. So if you want to look at the impact Ms. Ghana has had, it's a multi-pronged approach. Let's start with the contestants. There's so many images and videos of before and after, when they came in, the grooming process they went through, and the benefits. If you cast your mind back on the hundreds of women who have benefited, you do not necessarily have to be a woman to be molded into that woman of substance who contributes to our national development. Okay. If you look at our political landscape, mm -hmm. we have the likes of Madam Bridget, who ended up being a, a, a flag bearer for yeah. a party. Um, when you look at the MPs, Honorable Benita, Benita. Golo Meke, mm -hmm. when you look at the finance industries, there's Sheila Zodeva, who runs a microfinance. And even in legal fields, one of our ladies, a couple of years ago, she clinched all the prizes for the uh, uh, law school. Mm. Sharp, intelligent woman who is distinguishing herself in the legal profession. When you look at educationists, we have contestants who did not necessarily win, who are running fantastic schools, Montessori model, where you, you're, it's a combination of the wit, wit, talent, you know, a, a intelligence of these young kids who are molding them to contribute to society. If you look at the entertainment, you have the likes of uh, Kafui Dankul, Yvonne Nelson, um, my big sister, Kalsum Sinari. They're all products of Ms. Ghana brand. And they will tell you that before they step foot, even I am a product of the Ms. Ghana brand. Mm -hmm. I was shy, I was introverted. Ms. Ghana helped mold me into who I am today and it did help mold all of them. And they would tell you that story. So both contestants and eventual winners have benefited from the life transforming tool that Ghana benefits from. Mm -hmm. When you want to look at like I said to you, the essence of the heartbeat of the Miss Ghana and the Miss World organization is about impacting lives. How does a program that you've organized, dedicated a whole season of hard work, which is designed to be able to train ladies on how to get their photo shoots right, how to dress well, how to walk um, well, how to pitch their business ideas, how to work on their elements of beauty, how to um, articulate their views, master the skills of communication and body language, how to stand in front of an audience and share your thoughts and on and on and on. And then at the end of the day, get them to win cash, to win a crown, and then to also win a car. In certain cases, it could be anything. You get them to win stuff. And then use the platform and the acquired social equity to be able to impact society. How does all of these things put together? be reduced to the word disrespect. Maybe disrespect has a different meaning. As you grow, you realize that it's not just, women being helped is not just limited to beauty pageants, exactly. really. And beauty pageants, as I think, when Kwame Kumar wanted to establish it, was because he wanted a common platform to empower women. And I think at that time, there weren't a lot of women doing a lot of things. Unlike today, where you find a woman engineer, you find a woman doctor, you find a woman doing things that you really didn't expect so many years ago would be doing. Mm. And so that alone can empower women to get them to do what they have to do. I think that uh, rather than beauty pageants drawing attention simply to the adversity or the challenges, 
they must also be the solution or proper solutions to these challenges. Um, there's a lot of worth in women, particularly Ghanaian women. And I think that the beauty pageants should look to drawing attention to this, the worth that women bring uh, to the development of Ghana. One thing the pageants can do is draw attention to the worth of women and the contributions they make to the uh, development of, of Ghana through the pageant. So if it means, you know, selecting women who can be highlighted, uh, their work can be highlighted during uh, the pageants, it will work. And this would be an opportunity for the, the young uh, participants to draw attention to these women they admire and who are contributing to uh, Ghana's development in various ways. As a queen, you need to be a relatable queen. If I say relatable, even queens have gone through some of these things you mentioned. As a relatable queen, what are you supposed to do? You need to tell your story. That is the only way to empower someone. Because once they hear what you've also been through and how you're standing for yourself and how you're having a crown on your head, even through all that you are trying to empower your next sister, there is something to smile about. If you want to do it, go for it. Don't let anybody deter you from your dreams. Growing up, I've seen a lot of beauty pageants being only about you know, women that are very thin and have a particular body type. And to young girls, it makes you, it make you believe that you're not beautiful. It, make, it makes you think that you need to be thin in order to be beautiful. And I want to encourage young girls to, to bury that thought. Beauty isn't about, it's not only about how you look, but it's what you have to offer, what's in your mind and what's in your heart. So if your body size is stopping you from being a beauty queen or entering pageantry, I want you to forget that and take that leap of faith and join any, any uh, pageantry that is willing to repre represent your body type. There's a lot more to gain than, than losing. I don't know that there's anything to lose because it grows you, it matures you, it uh, polishes you, it gives you confidence, it gives you a lot of self-esteem. You learn and you grow. Even if you don't win, there's a lot you gain from participating. The hallmark of a beauty queen is when you're able to tell what you did with the opportunity that was given to you. So if you're out there and you feel like, listen, I've seen Ghana's Miss Beautiful, I've seen Miss Ghana, I've seen Miss Malaika and all the other good pageants and you want to go, you should, just try it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that, especially for young women considering their future, um, pageants are not just for to display beauty and um, eloquence, but they should use that as an opportunity to educate themselves and to take advantage of the exposure it creates and then use their platforms for positive change. So once you become someone who is a public figure or someone who has um, the attention of the public, Think about how you can use this to impact other lives. Um, we, we give them fabric every year. The other sponsors give them other things. But beyond that, there's something that they can use that platform for. And I would appreciate that they avert their minds to what positive impact they can use their platforms to achieve. I will call on uh, maybe uh, corporate Ghana to also support financially or materially to make some of this pageantry interesting. I think beauty pageants are, are good ideas and um, for as long as we're projecting the right things, things that support and project society in the right light. And if people win and we task them to get, to go into areas that have, that have benefits to society, I think that it's incredible and it's 
the benefit society is huge. So we should be conscious of the positives. If there are negatives, by all means, get rid of it. But let's look at beauty pageants in the light of what they can do and how we can leverage on them to make good social impact. Miss Ghana is our national you know, pride and heritage. Um, one of the um, legacies that our first president, um, may he still rest in peace, or Sajid for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah initiated. And we have been trying, you know, in the last 65 years to keep that torch burning. Uh, it's our hope that all Ghanaians, all in sundry, you know, will join us in, in, you know, carrying, you know, or protecting this national national heritage because like he said one of his famous quotes he says let me try and pick it says he says as far as I'm concerned I'm in the knowledge that death can never distinguish the torch I have lit in Ghana and Africa long after I'm gone the light will continue to burn burn aloft giving light and guidance to all people mm. so that's what all of us should be done not just for this legacy but for everything in general and our country will be a force to reckon with.